Okay, guys, it's time to talk about credibility. Credibility, this is something else that a lot of people sort of take for granted and don't think about. But man, oh man, if anything on the web, no matter if you're Instagramming or tweeting or blogging, you've got to come off as credible. Why is it so important to be credible? Because there, when it comes to the internet and the what's on the web, there are no rules, you guys. We are talking about the wild, wild west for the 21st century in the sense that anything goes. So why would someone go onto your blog post or for that matter, your Instagram and your Twitter feed and not only read what you have to say, but care about what you have to say and trust what you have to say because you are credible in what you're talking about. And I don't mean to say that if you're writing about yoga that you have to be a certified yoga teacher. That's not what I mean. It means that you have the not only the experience in yoga, but you've got the credibility in terms of what you're writing, in terms of that you're the real deal. That's why, again, the words themselves are so important. Now, how is it that you are establishing credibility? Okay, again, this is really important in terms of tips. Number one, when you are writing a blog post, be as specific as possible. Don't just say that sugar cereals are really bad for you. No, you wanna give actual statistics and listing why sugar cereals are bad for you. So for Frosted Flakes, you're gonna to wanna to mention what the sugar count is and what servings and maybe what a dietitian has to say. A really easy way to do this is to hyperlink your story with something else that's out on the web, something that maybe ends in .gov or ends in .org, so it comes off official. That means don't link to Wikipedia, you guys. Anyone can write and edit on Wikipedia. Look, I love Wikipedia, but that is not a valid source. You want to source what you are writing. Even if I'm writing a movie review, I source a lot actually. I'll source to IMDB, I'll source to a New York Times article. You want to source your things and you want to be specific as possible. Another thing you wanna do is revise your work. This is not just in terms of improving the language, which is important, and that's what we talked about in voice, but you wanna check for spelling, you wanna check for word usage, you wanna come off professional, quite frankly. If your blog posts are riddled with spelling errors or you're spelling there, like T-H-E-I-R, when it should be T-H-E-Y, apostrophe R-E, that makes a difference, okay? We're all not gonna win the spelling bee, but you want to make sure it reads as professional as possible. It's really that easy. One tip for this is to read your stuff out loud. If you are stumbling something as you're reading it to yourself, it'll be stumbling for people who are reading it on a screen, okay? So that's also where you catch a lot of those spelling mistakes and if you forget a word, I have a problem where my brain and my hands are working at two different speeds. So I have a lot of problems with skipping over words and missing something and readers will bring it to my attention and I'm so embarrassed. So again, you wanna revise, you wanna make sure those details are there, you wanna fact check, and you just wanna, again, make sure that you come off credible. And if you're presenting facts, make sure that you present these facts. If you're presenting an opinion, you still wanna be linking to things, a YouTube video, just anything to improve the overall credibility of your post. It, again, you want people to listen to you, you want people to trust you. Okay, one more thing that's so important for being credible is that on your blog post, you definitely wanna have some sort of about page or some biography of you. You can mention this 
within the actual blog post, you could maybe put a paragraph underneath every blog post that you write. Again, you can't assume that people are constantly reading you. Pretend they're reading you for the first time. They wanna know why it is that you think you can write about yoga. Um, if it's because you've taken 20 different kinds of yoga classes in the past year, that's something you want to put in your blog post. So for me, writing about movies, I have my own about page, and this is what it looks like. It's called Mara Spiel, and again, it has a little bit of my voice in there, right? It's not just about Mara. Like I said, I'm a little bit irreverent, so I put a little Yiddish word in there, and I have a photo of myself from the Cannes Film Festival to show that I'm not just in my apartment all day. I'm out there seeing movies. I'm part of the action. I have an image gallery beneath. And this is probably too long of a bio, but this is really what you want. Um, your bio, it can be your, you can write it in first person, like, hi, my name is Mara Reinstein, or you could just say, Mara Reinstein is an entertainment journalist and continue the details from there. You want to put your education, if you do have background in the field, definitely put your education, where you live, a few hobbies. If you are writing about Hallmark movies, yeah, mention, oh, during the day, I'm a CPA, but at night, oh, I have Hulu and Netflix and my DVR all synced up to all the Hallmark movie channels and I watch them every single night. So whatever your level of passion or expertise is, you wanna make sure it is also listed in your bio. You also wanna mention maybe your email address so people don't think that you're some bot who is just creating this. You want to show that you are a real person with real facts, with real figures, with real opinions, and that you are accessible. All of these things help in establishing your credibility. Even if you don't have your blog up and running yet, I definitely recommend that you still just go to your computer or go to a notebook and write your about page. First of all, it's actually really fun. And second of all, again, it makes you think about all the things in your life that you have lived and seen and done. You wanna distill it into about 100 words that frames you as a person to the outside world. That's why it's so important. And again, it can be something that's your own about page or it can be a few sentences underneath each blog post, but you definitely want the readers to know who you are. Okay, here's your exercise. If you haven't done it already on your own blog post, I want you to write your about page. So this should be about 100 words. I'd say that's a pretty good number. And again, you wanna mention your experience, you wanna mention your education if it's necessary, you wanna mention your hobbies if it pertains to what it is you're blogging about, you wanna put your photo in there eventually, you maybe you want a headline, you wanna really capture who it is, who you are, and so that the readers know to trust you and that they like you and they consider you an expert um, in the field. So guess what? By now you have your angle, you have your headline, you have an idea of your writing voice, you know your point, you have your lead, you have your bio. What's next? We're gonna do a little bit of troubleshooting and then we're gonna wrap it up.